Hi everybody, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, you've heard the stories, you heard the saying, bad news comes in threes. Well, <laughs> today's story kind of proves the point. Our first story today comes from Royal Caribbean as the Odyssey of the Seas experienced a medical emergency last night around 7 p.m. where a 31-year-old crew member had to be rushed to medical care because they didn't have the proper care on board. We don't really know what the circumstances are. We don't really know if it was an injury, if it was a medical condition or what it was, but they had to divert to Bermuda. Well, they dropped them off, ambulance is waiting, brought them over for medical care, and then the cruise continued off on its journey. And then at 5 a.m., that's right, the very next morning, they had to divert right back to Bermuda again, because this time there was a passenger on board who was experiencing difficulties and had to also be removed to hospital. <laughs> within within 12 hours of each other, basically, um, two medical evacuations and diversions to the same place that they just came from. It uh, doesn't happen very often. And not only that, then within eight hours of that, the Oasis of the Seas also had a passenger medical emergency and had to divert once again to, Ber to Bermuda to uh, look after that passenger. Now, this is just one of those sayings, and I keep pressing this point over and over and over again to people out there. Have yourself insurance, including medical evacuation especially, because I don't care if you have canceled for any reason insurance, get your money back insurance, the main one is medical insurance when you're traveling. And so many people think their credit cards cover everything, it says so in their thing. Read the fine print, find out exactly what it does cover, because believe it or not, some of the evacuation that they say that they cover only is evacuation, say, from the ship to the hospital and not, for instance, from that hospital in whatever country you're in back to an American or Canadian or European hospital to get your own healthcare system underway. So really read that and make sure that you have evacuation insurance for anything that happens, especially as we get up there in our ages. And I hope both the crew member and the two passengers are doing well and they make a very speedy recovery. Another thing Royal Caribbean announces is that they are raising their guidance up. Now, what guidance is, is what they are estimating their profitability to be, what they think their shares are going to be worth, etc., what their payouts will be, dividends decline, and uh, yeah. They are saying that because of the boom right now in cruise, not only is there a boom in cruising, but they've been raising their prices and their costs with their new ships coming online like the Icon and the Utopia, and people are still booking it and selling it out. And though that means that they're making even more profit on these that they've been able to raise their guidance. So if you think the prices are gonna be dropping anytime soon on those cruise ships or larger cruise ships or the new cruise ships and with Royal Caribbean, uh, think again, uh, because if they're selling out and people are paying the high prices, they're not gonna be dropping those prices anytime in the near future. But hey, if you're a share holder with Royal Caribbean, that's a pretty good news because that means your dividends and your profits are going to be higher. Norwegian Cruise Line has also just announced that they are making changes for the entire itinerary on three upcoming sailings on, on the breakaway. This is all coming up in May. They're, they're all three seven-night cruises and they are changing everything including the amount of time you're spending in port as well as cutting one of the port destinations altogether. The first two ports of call, they are cutting one hour and an hour and a half from each of those stops, making you have less time in port. The third stop, Tortola, they are 
canceling that all together. You will not be stopping there. You'll have a sea day instead. And then you're going to get an extra four hours where? Their private island. That's right. They're, they're going to send you to their private island instead of being there eight hours. You're going to get to spend 12 hours on the private island for Norwegian Cruise Line. And they are tout touting many different reasons, including fuel optimization. Now, in case you're wondering what that means, that means they want to travel slower so they can save fuel costs. And they're also saying it's also due to regulations. Now, this is also one of the itineraries, the last Norwegian cruise ship got back late to port, uh, returning to the home port because of, they said, the whale um, zone. They have to travel slower, uh, speed zone in this area, and they are traveling through that area one more time. But again, They've known about these time zones and timelines and things for many, many months now. This is not a new regulation that came into effect this week, but they are changing the itineraries now and changing the amount of time in port. And they did not say, tout this as the main reason for doing it, but they did kind of list you know, fuel optimization as one of them and to enhance the guest experiences. Now, if you're booked on one of these three cruises, they have come out and stated that they are giving a $50 per person for the first two guests in each stateroom as compensation as onboard credits. Now, these are not refundable onboard credits, which means you have to use them during your cruise, but in seven days, it's not hard to spend $100 on a cruise ship at all. But again, it's one of these situations where you see itineraries changed and that, and the excuse is kind of, we wanna save money. And your experience is gonna be less because of it, but we're gonna save money and give you a little bit of the money back instead. So I don't know the whole story behind it, but I do not like when they say that they're changing things based on fuel optimization or enhancing the guest experience because they want you to spend more hours in their private island as opposed to three other ports of call that you were actually booking to go to. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think it was a whole bunch of factors or do you think that they said, you know what, let's just cancel that port and we are going to try and save some money on our fuel, won't have to travel as far and uh, we'll get them to go to our private island where they can spend even more money in our own little bubble. Or do you think, no, nope, yeah, you know, the whale situation and the... Uh, guidance from different countries and that, that's why they had to slow down. Uh, it's, it's hard to understand the real reasoning behind it without being on the inside track. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.